I'm here with Skip Pauling, the great grandson of the founder of Pauling Leather Company and the closest thing to royalty you can get in the entire world of leather tanning. Thank you so much for having me. And Thanks for having me. Uh, we are here to talk about the world's best cordovan leather. I've been to like factories in uh, everywhere from South America to Spain and everybody knows that Hawaii makes the best cordovan in the entire world. And we're actually lucky enough today to get a tour to see how the cordovan gets made at Hawaii Leather Company. And behind us, they've just finished up now, but this is where you actually have the, the hides of the animals getting cut up. Correct. We're cutting the fronts off and trimming the butts for tanning because the fronts get tanned with one tannage and the butts are veg tanned. Okay, how long does it take to make whole quarter of it? Six months. Six months. Right, and you'll see a lot of that, it accounts for a big part of the size of the building. A lot of that is it gets it gets to rest. I mean, we get it to certain stages and, and it sits for a while. That's always been part of the process. And as we spoke earlier, I'm not changing that because it's worked for all these years. So the, the temptation to try and do it faster is one that's been easy to resist. So from here, we would take these hides over and they get soaked back, soak the salt out of them, and then we're gonna chemically remove the hair. Go ahead. This would be the next step that we were talking about after trimming the corner of the butts. Got it. So we're gonna come over here and we're doing the unhairing in the cement mixer. This is where the hair comes up. This is where the hair comes up. So how do, you, how do you do that? How do you get hair up? It's chemically done and it's the basically industrial strength version of hair. <laughs> so now that, you, now that you've seen the unhairing, what you'll do is we come back and before we begin the tanning, like all of us really, we pickle. And pickling is an acid pre-tan, which prepares the fibers to accept the tannins. Okay. And so what you'll see behind us here, the, the sort of white looking, that, those are pickled horse butts. But here, the, the test to see if it's properly pickled is it should take and hold an impression like that. So wet. So this is going to become cordovan? Yeah. This tannage is intended to make the leather as dense as possible, as opposed to when the sole leathers where they want to, they want to make it as thick as possible. Sure. If, if we were to do something like that, it would become so thick you wouldn't be able to make a shoe out of it. Absolutely. So that's what that's what this is. How long does this take? The day. The day. It's a day. What is happening then? That's that's tanning cordovan. Whoa. These big vests, I've seen these in pictures of hauling. This is a very important part of the step, right? Yes, this is traditional vegetable tanning. Right. And so much more uh, deliberate and slow than doing it in a mill. But you know, we're trying to basically infuse the leather with this tanning solution that we've brewed here ourselves. And you can think of tanning like this as the reverse of making tea. This tea, you put a bag in and the tea comes out of the water. And here we've got a solution and the, the leather, which you just saw being colored in over there, is actually going to absorb over the course of its time in here, the 60 days. Yeah, I've heard of pit tanning, where that's you put what, them in. That's what this is. This is pit tanning, okay. But so, not, not stacked in like some of the solar tanners do. It's, it's hung in, what we would call hung in. Stuffing is basically an impregnation of the skins with a blend of oils, greases, and waxes that are generally solid at room temperature. And then it's literally beaten into the leather. And we'll revisit that up there. Going up. What's in the, what, what's in the cordovan stuffing? Basically the same, just different proportions. Okay. So we got beef tallow, we got fish oil, paraffin, beeswax. So how long does the leather, does the cordovan sit in this for? It, it goes into these drums. And it's, oh, it, so this is, this this is, is where it gets mixed. mixed. Yes, this is, this is where we're mixing. This is like, like keeping the soup of the day. Okay. okay so, so these are stuffing mills are and like one will have cordovan, one will have chrome XL. Yes. And so these, they steam, they steam the drums up and then they put the skins in there to run them and warm them and then they bucket the, that blend in there and then it runs, usually 45 minutes-ish. 
So all this talk about the uh, the secret important hot stuffing recipe, it spends the least amount of time in there, like just, just right. 40, 45 minutes. Correct. Right. Does it get like tumbled? Yeah, the whole time. Okay. So now that you've seen stuffing, okay, this is after the stuffing, the oils in, we're going to actually hand oil it, which is called we call smearing or it's currying more. And so what they're doing is they're hand brushing on this warm oil and then building a pile. And it's gonna sit in these piles, as you see across the way there, for 90 days to allow the oil to penetrate all the way through. So you're just gonna go from here over. Yeah. And up, and up top here. And now you're gonna finish it off down to the thinner part. So it's already been stuffed. Been stuffed. And now you're applying extra oils by hand. Extra oils by hand. And then you let it sit there for three months. For three months. So that all the oils can like penetrate it. And then eventually, what you would be seeing next is it's going to go over for shaving. So this is the shaving operation, and you can see this is done by his eye, and then just with foot pressure. So there you can see before and after. So this is the then after the shaving. After this that is, gentleman has shaved it down to expose the shell. Yes. This is the final inspection and trim, and he's here trimming off to get it ready to go over for, for coloring, for, for dyeing and staining. After it's been stuffed and then hand oiled and then dried for two months, then the shaved. Then the shaving. And then right, the shaving up. down to a more uniform thickness. And now we're ready to finish it. Okay. And so we, we put the finish on through this machine, which is a seasoning machine or a brush finish machine, and you take and it brushes the stain coats, the dye coats, onto the leather. But you can see when we talk about you know dye, the, there is still going to be variation. This is when people talk about pure animal leather. This is what they're talking about. I mean, it's, you're, you're accentuating what's naturally there. This begins to be the what you see is what you get moment. So what, what happens to it to make it shiny, beautiful, and caught of you like that? It's just this glass rod that's repeatedly going back and forth. And I can, I can turn it on in a second when you want to listen because it's loud enough that you won't be able to hear anything. So is that the glazing, it, it, it rubs it and I guess kind of agitates it a little bit and doing that brings like the, the, the oils and waxes to the stuff? Is that why it's, it's shiny? It's just polishing that. Why, like why is it shiny? It's just polishing that fiber structure. There's a big part of it that, that we are given too much credit for. You know, nature puts it into this part of this animal and then we have a particular tinge that prepares it to accept the steps that we take with it. And, you know, so that's where you get, you know, you get to that great place. I mean, and, and the idea that we put so much stuff into it is why it polishes and stays polished and lasts so long. I mean, it's not, again, we have a recipe that works and we've not changed it. But that's why it's good. It's not that we're such wizards. We, my great grandfather figured it out and we've been smart enough to keep doing it that way. It's a self-shining leather, right? That's what people like about it. It is. And when it goes through here, it, it flattens it out, gets rid of any lost flat. creases. Yeah, it's, it's really literally just an ironing. I mean, it's like it's like you would do on a on a shirt where you just want it to be as smooth as it can be. Yeah. It doesn't take care of if there's problems. It doesn't mask them. It just just lays everything down to make it nice and smooth. And this. So this then is Portovan's last stop before it leaves. And what we're doing here is we're doing our the final QC of the sort. Um, so we're looking to see if there's any defects. And we're trying to determine something like that, which is going to compromise the cutability for a shoe guy, particularly if they're making a larger one piece pattern or a boot. This one, we're, we may argue a little bit at some point, 
but this one I'm going to leave with this grade without trimming because I, it's my judgment that they can cut around the things that are happening in that shell. And the same, and the same thing here. And this, six months later. Yep. However many steps. Yep. All the flaws. Yep. This is your final quarter version. This is, this has been yep. how Cordovan gets made. What many consider the world's best leather, the world's best tannery, Boeing Shell Cordovan. This is how it happens. Uh, well, thank you very much for your time. Thanks. For showing me around. This, has been, very, this has been very, very cool. And I hope that the next time you uh, inspect, every time, next time you wear your Cordovan shoes, you uh, have a little more appreciation for all the magic and unbelievable time and effort that goes into it. Because these guys here are giving it 110% to bring you some of the finest, the finest Cordovan in the world. Thanks. Skip, thank you for having me. Thank you so much. All right, cool. Oh yeah, also subscribe. Whatever. Bye. <laughs>